Hello everybody, thank you for coming along today. I'm just getting myself microphoned up, I'm getting my last minute things ready to go. Uh, hello Lloyd, I see Lloyd has joined there. Uh, I'm going to fix my comments because the comments, oh, it's auto captioning apparently. I don't think I like auto captioning so I'm going to turn that off. Um, Oops. All right. Hopefully everyone can see and hear me. Oops. Hello Lloyd, I'm just getting last minute things set up for anyone who uh, uses a water blaster. Make sure you always run that water through for 30 seconds or so first so that you get any of the water, sorry, the air bubbles out of the lines. That will save the motor on your water blaster. So if anyone doesn't do this, always do this. Good, I've got my buckets, I've got my products, I think I've got everything I need today. Um, hmm, yes, I think I do. Um, hope everyone is doing well. I'm aware that unfortunately there is a bit of a, a lighting issue. Um, since we are in Auckland, we have sun and shade today. We also have rain and no rain, so we're going to see what we can do. Uh, and do our best with the light we've got. I'm hoping that overall the uh, camera can just accommodate and keep me relatively visible. Let's wait and see if anyone else is going to jump on there before we crack in. Um, we'll have a real quick explainer of what we're going to do today um, and see if my face could be lit up hopefully. Um, so today we're going to be talking about um, exterior deep cleaning. So uh, essentially what we're going to do today is uh, do a more heavy cleaning of the outside of this car than what you would normally do in an everyday cleaning process. Um, for those of you who have been watching the videos from the start, uh, one of the first videos we did was a how-to guide on how to safely wash your vehicle using two bucket methods and things like that. Um, when we did that, I'm just going to remove my microphone cable before I get it caught on something. Uh, when we did that, um, we talked about how to do it safely. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, but a lot of what we're going to do today is be more around some heavier cleaning aspects. So um, if you haven't watched the initial video of how to do a safe washdown process um, and you hear me today just skipping over concepts like two bucket methods and things like that, um, I'd recommend after today's live stream to go back and watch um, what, you, what you didn't see earlier because we're going to not talk too much about why we're using two buckets things today. We're just going to crack on with some more heavy cleaning. Uh, hey Nathan, yes the sun does suck. Um, Hello Luke. Yep, the sun is a pain in the pain in the bum for trying to do video, but anyway, hopefully you guys can roughly see me and then when I go onto my uh, iPhone camera, which I'm hoping is going to be more reliable today, um, then uh, that should be better as well. So let's just crack into a little bit about what we're trying to address today. So we are going to wash this car. Uh, probably not going to wash the entire thing with you guys on the live stream, just because it takes forever. Although maybe we'll see how fast we can do it. We're going to talk more about things like plastic cowls like this. We're going to talk more about um, where you get build up of dirt around things like windows, window seams, things like around these, these rubbers and trims here. Um, we're going to talk thing, just things like roof rails, anything that's sort of like a plastic or rubber material. We'll talk about other things that you can also clean in the wash down stage. For example, I'm going to pop open the fuel cap. We'll talk about that. Um, and we're going to talk about door jams, so I'll be using my handheld camera uh, and doing some door jam cleaning, some more thorough cleaning of those areas. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about liquid decontamination, so we'll explain that in more detail, but getting rid of things like uh, iron uh, and sometimes tar, not so much on the wash down step, but mainly iron and other contaminants in the wash step. We've also got, there's like some polish build up around this headlight here, so we'll try and address that. Um, and just general heavier cleaning, so talking more about the underguards and more about the mud flaps and all the plastics, things like that that are dirty. Um, this car, let's, we've, those who've been watching the videos will already have a bit of a brief, brief background on it, but 
Uh, it's my own car, it's my essentially my dog wagon, I suppose. It's on 160,000 Ks. Um, I've never polished it um, or given it a clay bar or anything, albeit I've only owned it for six months. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's pretty, pretty raw. Um, we'll go around it with the other camera and just have a bit better look at the car. Uh, it's all pretty good overall. There is a lovely big scrape and dent on the back of it where I reversed into a pole in the driveway just yesterday, which some of you uh, can't see the new haircut in that lighting. That's probably a good thing, Kurt. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll turn the um, exposure on the camera up a little bit. Did that even work? Probably not. I, it did. Okay, I'll turn up the exposure on this camera. That is going to probably blow out the uh, colouring around the back of the car. As you can see, it's going all white, but hopefully it will show me and the products things a bit better. Okay, so let's just have a quick look around this car um, and let's hope that the camera stays on. So uh, it is sort of dirty. It hasn't been washed in probably six weeks or so. It's got general grimy stuff. Um, got this sort of polish residue around the headlight here. Um, those haven't been polished yet, they were given a quick sand when some panel bedding was done, but they haven't been polished. Got a lovely little, little scrape on the corner of the bumper there. Um, we'll talk about you know these mud flaps, how to get them looking a bit cleaner. They're looking quite shiny at the moment, which I don't particularly like. And the underguards, things like that, we'll talk more about that. We did a little bit of this on the Tesla, but it wasn't exactly filthy filthy. Um, see there, it is dirty, we're going to talk about all this sort of trim and these sorts of trims up here as well, what to do with those. Talk about the fuel filler. We will talk about uh, door jams. These aren't that bad, a little bit of grimy stuff along there. They're not horrendous, um, but with like, like with lots of the videos we do, it's more about the process um, and knowing how to do it than necessarily quite how bad this particular car is. Um, that's my big lovely reversing into a pole on the driveway because I wasn't paying attention. Lovely fake plate, so there you go. Uh, and yeah, it is quite dirty as you can see. It's got bird droppings and just general grime. Uh, and obviously tomorrow's video, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I really should know this, but I'm pretty sure we're doing some sanding tomorrow, so um, got to get this thing clean and ready for that. Wheels are just dirty. Um, I mean, like I say, I haven't taken any huge uh, exterior sort of care so far. It gets hydrophobic shampoo and easy coat and stuff like that to sort of give it a bit of a top layer, but there's been no actual clay barring or polishing or anything else done to this car um, so far. Okay. Um, and all the parcels are gone. <laughs> yes, indeed they are, Joel. And yours is on the way. It actually got picked up this morning by the courier, so there you go. So let's talk about quickly about some products we've got today. I've got a few little tools to just talk about really quickly. Brushes, where's my camera? I keep forgetting my screen is here and my camera is here, so apologies if I always look this way and then come up this way. Uh, we've got the large bores here brush and the soft chemical resistant uh, wheel brush, which is also not just for wheels. Um, I've got a couple of the brushes out of the Lake Country five pack of detailing brushes. So it comes with five of these little detailing brushes. Again, sorry about the light, guys, this is pretty terrible. Um, there's three different sort of, actually let me show you this on the other camera, might be better. Okay, so there's three of these brushes here, different sort of firmness bristles, that's a very soft, almost like a horse here, a little bit firmer. Um, you've got a heavier bristle, that's really quite heavy, and something around the middle. Now you don't have to use these particular brushes, I'm pretty realistic, I'm not here to say that you need this, 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 this and this. Uh, although I'd love to, but like at the end of the day, um, anything sort of with a firm bristle like that is good. Those are those brushes, cotton buds, which I've just taken out of the bathroom. So those are the other things that I've got today. Those are the main tools we've got, really not much else. We've got the normal wheel bucket, normal wash and rinse bucket with the grit guards, drying towel, um, all of those things which you've seen on other videos. I'm not going to explain those too much today. If you're watching this video and you haven't seen any other videos, then there will be a product list to show you what exactly we're talking about at the end of this. We've got the citrus washing gloss again to wash the outside with. That's all the pretty standard stuff. We've got the same wheel cleaners we've had on other videos, which is the bilberry and the dragon's breath. Um, and let's talk about some more specific stuff today. So we've got the um, firewall iron burn. 
Now that one we're not necessarily going to use on the wheels, we're going to actually use that on the entire vehicle today, all the paintwork and everything else, which you will see. And for anyone who hasn't used iron on a car yet, um, and is thinking, what in the world, why would you do that? I will show you. Uh, we've also got orange degreaser. I want to talk about this specifically for just a second. Um, for those of you who have used this or have bought this or you know looking to buy it, um, orange degreaser is not designed to be used out of the um, bottle as it is. It's a dilutable product. Okay, so the minimum you want to dilute this is about six to one or five to one roughly. That's what this solution here in a different bottle is. That's a mixture of about five to one or six to one of the orange degreaser. That's pure. Don't go spraying that as it is all over your car necessarily because that is really strong as it is. That's a better way to do it. And we're just starting to show you again about the value side of things. That bottle, um, if you're using it six to one, makes three liters. So it's a lot better value for more money. We've also got the citrus pre-wash, which we've used before. And that's again diluted down about one to four. And we've just got the normal pH neutral active snow foam and the normal snow foam as well. Um, now I do sometimes get asked what's the difference between the citrus pre-wash and the orange degreaser. And um, the orange degreaser is stronger so we're going to use it for a bit of a different purpose today. And the other things I've got which I may not really use but we'll see how we go. I've got some citrus tar and glue which is the citrus solvent based tar and glue remover. I like having that on board because if there's anything rough that can't come off with some of these cleaners that will remove it. Um, and I've also got a little bit of citrus bling just as a spray wax sort of product which I may use when it comes to the drying process. Um, so hopefully that is all pretty self-explanatory. Um, and, oops, sorry, I'll just change that. So we'll kick into it. So the first thing I want to start off with today, um, what I want to start with, let's start off with things like, um, let's talk about the uh, fuel filler. So um, on this video, if you are watching this right now, put a comment, oh wow, that blew me out with the, with the light, didn't it? Put a comment on this video and let me know if you do normally wash uh, inside the fuel filler. Um, we could make a joke about you, Joel. I know you won't be washing inside the fuel filler because there isn't one, but um, <laughs> let's talk about who washes inside here. So when you're detailing a car, the exterior to me at least is not just what we can see when everything's closed up. The exterior to me is fuel filler, door jams, engine bay, um, under the guards, you've got the wheels of course. Anything that is not actually uh, inside, I suppose, the seals of the car is the best way to think about it. Uh, the engine bay we obviously did in the video the other day, so we're not going to touch that or even open that today. Um, what I would do normally is um, start with the wheels first. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm not going to really bother doing much of the wheels um, on this video. I might do a real quick one on the back, but we're going to start with everything else. So let's assume for the purpose of this video that the wheels are already done. Um, just having a look. So let's assume the wheels are already done. We'll do it a little bit later on. So if you're wanting to do a deeper clean of the car, what you could do at this stage is start by snow foaming it, okay? So standard sort of pre-wash we spoke about on an earlier video, you'd snow foam it down dry, the pH neutral snow foam works best when the car's dry, you rinse that off and you start scrubbing things. Now because it's a warm day um, and I'm talking and sort of explaining, I'm not going to snow foam it first because if I do that, it's going to start to dry and then the car's going to start to dry and I'm going to be rushing around like a mad person trying to talk and, and clean. So we're going to talk about how to do different areas before snow foaming it um, and that's going to be a more concentrated way of doing it. So we'll talk about the fuel filler first. So um, firstly, this one's not that dirty actually. I'll get the other camera again. You will find if you haven't been cleaning sort of inside those fuel fillers and things like that, they will be pretty dirty, okay? This one's not too bad. I think I've actually given this a, a light clean earlier when I, not long after I bought the car. You can still see grime up in here. Now, a couple of things I would say. If you're gonna to touch in here, tighten the living hell out of that. If you've got a car, which you're, in fact, it's even a good idea sometimes on this, just to have a look and just check, make sure it looks all sort of clean around there that it's getting a good seal. If it's not your car, or if you are concerned about doing this, if it's an older car, for example, and you're worried about water getting into the uh, gas tank, then just don't do this. Um, but live by sort of knowing that, you know, this thing has to be pretty sealed, right? You don't want gas or fumes of gas leaking out of this. So they are very, very sealed to begin with. Um, but, you know, take it as you will. If this, if this sort of process concerns you, uh, then simply put, don't do it. 
What I'm going to do with this is grab the citrus pre-wash. I don't need anything too strong. I am working quite far away from the screen today, so I will come back and forward to look at comments, but I can't really see them very well. I'm just going to get the citrus pre-wash. I'm using citrus pre-wash because it shouldn't be too dirty what's in here. I'm just use a good amount of that. Then I'm going to grab the soft chemical resistant brush. I'm going to dump that in the bucket just to make sure it's sort of clean and get a bit more liquid on there. And just start to scrub. And you can see all that dirt down in the corner there. As you get in there and start to scrub that, a lot of that will come out. For those of you who are just joining us, we are doing some more intricate cleaning of the exterior of this vehicle today. We're just talking about this fuel flap. If you aren't comfortable doing this because you're concerned about water going in your fuel system, for example, um, then ignore what I'm doing right now. Um, but it is my firm opinion that anything of a relatively modern car where the fuel system has a good seal, because it always should. Uh, I believe this is pretty safe. Uh, I've done it on lots of cars. Uh, and also I'll talk about something else in a second, which is how to rinse this off. We're not going to get the water blaster and blast the living daylights out of this, okay? So we're just gonna take a few extra precautions. At the end of the day, I can't smell gas. There's nothing leaking out of here. Um, as long as you do this safely, it's pretty safe. Don't forget about that little bit behind there. Now some of you are probably thinking, oh, he's using a brush on the paint. Yes, I am, because on areas like this, some similar concept to the door jams, it's going to get dirty, it's hard to clean it without a little bit of agitation. Okay, so I'm just using a brush, it's the best and most efficient way to do this. You could use a wash mitt too, but you're going to spend a lot more time, especially if it's dirty. Okay, now I've done that, i take my brush that I've used, I'm just going to put it in the wheel bucket, rinse that dirt off. and then get it ready for the next thing. Just see if there's any comments that I need to address first. I usually check the fuel flap and decide if it needs a clean base on how dirty it is. Exactly, so if he doesn't need to do it, if you don't need to do it, sorry, don't do it. So I'm gonna rinse this off. Now I'm gonna use the water blaster. Now for those who watched the engine bay video, you would have seen that I was talking about how the water blaster is not being used because of the pressure necessarily. It's being used because of the spray pattern being quite wide. Okay, so that's the same concept as today. So what we're gonna do is stand back quite a bit. Keep this moving. Now the other thing I would say to anyone who is a bit concerned about this exact process just now, firstly there is a drain hole which seems to be pretty rubbish on this car. Um, if you think about this, let's just think about this for a second, when that's closed, that's not sealed, okay? That's got a little bit of a seal there, but it's not fully sealed against this. And for anyone who's water blasted and snow foamed their whole car before, they would know that water gets in here, okay? So again, I'm just giving some reassurance here for anyone a bit concerned about this process. This isn't a sealed compartment as it is, uh, and this has to be very sealed for safety purposes anyway. So I wouldn't be so concerned. Make sure it's tight, make sure the cap's in good condition. If you're worried about it, don't do that. But anyway, let's have a look. So, where there was all that dirt down before, it's nice and clean. All that sort of, um, is that plastic or rubber? Plastic surface, it's nice and clean as well. Okay, so done. And then at this point in time, I'll just close that, okay? And then we'll leave that for the snow foam step, which is next. Um, cool. Um, <laughs> I see that uh, Kelly there is saying that Kurt's going to get a haircut, so that'll be interesting. Good luck. Uh, okay, so that's done. So it's pretty easy, right? These are, these are nice, easy things you can do that don't take a lot of time. Okay, so now I've talked about that. Let's talk about the sort of wiper cowl area. So first I'm going to pop these wipers up. I'm going to go back to my iPhone camera. Okay, cool. So again, we're just going to talk about this. Now, you could just rinse this off like normal uh, and use the snow foam and just mitt it down. There is nothing wrong with that. But this is looking pretty nasty, okay? This is not a very good condition trim. You've got a lot of grit and dirt all down into there. The other thing about this trim there is that um, that whole rubber doesn't fit. <laughs> Lovely quality. <laughs> um, I'm going to probably solution finish this. In fact, not probably. I am going to put solution finish on this. 
And to do that, I want this as bare and clean and stripped as possible. So for this trim, I'm going to move on to a stronger product than the Citrus Pre-Wash. I'm going to use the Orange Degreaser Diluted, just simply because it's stronger. Now for those of you, again, as I'm doing this, as I'm talking, those who are tuning in, we have discussed that we, because I'm talking on video today, um, I'm not going to worry about little bits of water drying up here and there. Um, I have to get cracking with this, but ideally you wouldn't want to let things dry up for too long. I'm just going to spray that down there relatively liberally. This is quite a strong product, okay, so I'm not going to give this too long before I scrub it and then rinse it off. Um, I don't want this to um, dry up. Now these wipers up, I'm going to scrub the wipers too, but I'm going to wait till I put them back down. Put them up like this gives me much better access to this um, plastic. Now if anyone else is doing this at home as well, by the way, some of these products um, are quite strong. So uh, you know, if you're, again, um, practicing good safety precautions, which um, you all should be, it's easier when you're not talking and holding a phone with a touch screen, but wearing nitrile gloves is a good idea. Um, and also having a face mask is a good idea because there are obviously sort of um, chemicals uh, that get into the air. Um, so if you've got a sort of face mask, use that. If you've got nitrile gloves, definitely use that. If you've got eye protection, use that as well. Um, for the sakes of the video today, um, without trying to make excuses, I just can't hold a touchscreen phone with nitrile gloves. It doesn't work. Um, and you probably couldn't hear me very well if I had a face mask on. So that is my reasons for not abiding exactly by what I've just told you to do. But we're going to sort of scrub that. Now, the other I can see here is that there are a few smaller, you can see hopefully down here, there's a couple of little gaps down here which this brush isn't actually being very effective in. This is where having other brushes does help. Just dump that in that bucket. I'm going to grab a little firmer bristle brush, that one there. I'm just going to go back and try and get more into those areas. Seems a bit overkill, right? But at the same time, if we want to put solution finish on here or something similar and try and do a long lasting protection afterwards, the most time or the more time we spend cleaning it is going to be the better at this point in time. I'm going to get up around these little washer jets, just give those a bit of a clean. Okay, it's drying up, so I want to get that off. So back to the water blaster. Now I can get closer on this, there's no fuel um, system to worry about here. Okay, so that first step is done. Now if you have a look at the bonnet, see all these white um, foamy specks coming down? That's product, okay? So I don't want that to sit there. So what I'm going to do... Just rinse that off. You're better having water sit there and dry up and making a little bit of a water spot than you are leaving a chemical like a degreaser sitting on there. Okay, so hopefully that is pretty self-explanatory, just checking there's no other comments. Um, now, as I said, I'm going to go back to these wipers. So I'm going to grab my orange degreaser again, go along the whole wiper arm. And again, I'm doing this because I'm probably going to solution finish these wiper arms. I'm going to get right over here. I'm going to get it along the line. I'm just going to do the whole sort of cowl area again, but get it along the line of where the rubber on the wiper is. Grab my brush, scrub that out again, and give this a good scrub. And I am putting a bit of pressure on here, guys. You want to give it a pretty good scrub. It's a hard plastic um, wiper cowl, this area. This is a metal, so you don't need to be too concerned about putting a little bit of pressure on. So I'll show you what we're going to do. It's one more little step after this bit. We'll get there in just a second. 
sorry if my camera work's not amazing, I'm actually not paying that much attention to where my camera is at the moment, so that's probably not very good. Okay, and then what we're going to do, this is really hard without, um, how am I going to do this? Mm, this is a terrible idea. Uh, I'll just lift this up. So then we're going to go over this as well. A little bit tricky to do with one hand, but not too bad. Cleaning that sort of rubber is a good idea. It can also help to stop little um, sort of streaky lines and things that you sometimes get on your windscreen when you're driving in the rain. So that is done. And again, we're taking this brush, we're putting it in the wheel bucket, rinsing it off, done. Back on the water blaster. Cool, and once again, you've got all these white specks of product overflowing. Get that off. Cool. And at this point, it's sometimes also a good idea just to have a look. Is there any product sitting on here? Not really, okay? So that's also gonna need to check. I'll keep reiterating about this guys, it's really good to keep going around these products, uh, sorry these products, Ugh, keep going around the car, make sure the products is not leaving liquid and residue everywhere. So let's have a look, how does it look? Very hard to focus, pretty clean, a lot cleaner than it was. And again, let's reiterate that for those joining, the reason we're doing this is because we want to A, give it a good clean, but B, put a good protectant like solution finish on for example, uh, and when we do that, we want that plastic to be as clean as possible, okay? So that's the, that's the second part. Hopefully that's all pretty easy so far, everyone. Um, do you need to use water soft, softening filters at your house? Um, do you need to? Yes. Do I have one? No. Um, I mean, if you have a water filter that takes out the hardness of the water, you're just going to find a lot less or far less water spotting problems. Um, but... Um, if you don't have one, you don't have one, right? Uh, there are ones that I can source in New Zealand, so if anyone needs a water filter, let me know. Um, but yeah, you should have one. Do I have one? No. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the next thing I'm going to do. And again, we've still got to wash the rest of this car, give it a quick wash at the end, but we're doing this with the little bits. Side skirt, same reason as before. Uh, we're probably going to solution finish that. Um, very quickly before I do that, I'm jump back on again. Let's just show you this. Mud flaps and side skirt. Okay, it's dirty. It's also, you can see here, it's sort of shiny up here and not so shiny down there. Some of that is dirt, some of that is just that it's sort of, the trim is a bit, I suppose, almost damaged in a way. We want to strip that, okay? So again, we want to strip this because we're going to put solution finish on it. So orange degreaser, once again, on the mud flap on this plastic. If you get the orange degreaser on the paint, don't worry about it. Just don't leave it on there to dry. Okay, so we're going to do that. There's one other step we will do. I'll show you in a second, but for now that's all I'm going to do. And for this one, um, I think I'll still use that one there. Will I? No, I use the bigger one. So I'm going to grab the this larger brush here. Hope everyone can see that. And I'm just going to scrub that. It's all pretty uh, simple so far, everyone. But again, we're just, I'm just sort of showing you here. These are other little things that you can do that are over and above a normal wash process um, and they will get you a better result guaranteed. Um, you don't necessarily have to do these sorts of extra steps every single time but they will get you a much better result. 
Now, as you do this side skirt, little trick here. Don't forget that that side skirt also goes inside the doors. So you want to get in there and scrub that out as well. Because when I put solution finish on this, I'm going to be doing the entire side step or side skirt, including what's inside these doors. Okay, I'm going to scrub that out. Back in the bucket, grab the iPhone, show you what that looks like. It's all nice and frothy. <laughs> That's what it should be like, okay? Uh, you are right, Carl, the iPhone camera is working better. I've actually moved the, um, the wireless modem is now downstairs, so that is part of the uh, success. See what you want to do. I'm going to use the water blaster still. The doors are open, right? So I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to keep this pointing. For those of you who can't really see it, I'll do this with the door closed to imagine what we're doing. Pointing it out sort of that way from inside the car so the inside of the car doesn't get wet. I'm going to start it outside the car first so I can see where the spray pattern is and then just slowly rinse through that inside of the, of the um, side skirt on the inside the door jam. You can also do this step with the um, with just a low pressure, so you could turn the water blaster off just to rinse it out as well. Um, but for this step, it's all good. Cool. And there is no water inside that car, which is the ideal thing. And then just do the rest of the side skirt. Okay, now let's show you very quickly. Now, see how that side skirt was all glossy and shiny up here before? It's not now, okay? It's a consistent sort of matte finish. That's what you want, okay? Even that mud flap has started to matte down. That mud flap is still not quite as far as I'd like it. Um, but I'm going to leave it at that for now. With these trims, when you're trying to get them cleaner, okay, I'm not going to do this on today's video because I want to keep this moving forward, um, but you're trying to get these trims matte. Same with the plastics. Um, put a comment here if you watched the leather video yesterday, but for those who watched the leather video, it was the same concept. We're trying to clean it to matte it down, and then we'll put a protectant on top. So same with these plastics. We're trying to clean it, matte it right down, um, get it sort of stripped um, so there's no grease and oils and dirt on top and existing uh, residue from other sealants before um, and then we'll put protectant on as a next step but that's it that for now okay so we're going to keep moving on the next thing I want to do is address all of these okay so once again I want to clean those off now for this what I'm going to do and I'll give you a little bit of insight here I'm going to use a citrus pre-wash it's not as strong as the orange degreaser I believe the orange degreaser would probably actually do a better job of that but what I don't want to do in this scenario, just for my own safety and being careful of things, is I don't want to spray orange degreaser all along this trim and then have it run down the car and dry up on the door cards, okay? Oh, sorry, not the door cards, on the exterior of the door. Uh, if orange degreaser dries up on the paint, will it permanently damage it? Probably not. Uh, but will it need some polishing and extra work? Possibly. So I just want to avoid that. The citrus pre-wash is safer. So I'm going to spray this just along these trims relatively liberally hopefully this is making sense let me know on this video who here cleans their car with extra steps like this uh, or who normally just gets their wash mitt and goes for gold so I'm going to do that as I'm doing this I'm going to work around the back window as well Cool, I'm going to let that sit for a minute, and while I do that, I'm going to take this opportunity just to let you guys know about quickly uh, what is happening with our business over this lockdown level three and four. Um, so just for those who haven't seen, it's level four right now. 
Uh, we are still able to send out products which are essential, so things which we deem as hygiene and sanitary based products. Um, so interior cleaners, for example, glass cleaners, microfiber cloths, we can still send those things out. Um, everything else we will send out at level three. Um, we've still got our subsidized shipping rate going, so that's anything over 50 bucks is free shipping. It's normally anything over 150 is free shipping, so that is still on a subsidized rate. Um, and I am packing orders every day, getting ready for level three. So there's about 20 odd orders, or a bit more than 20 orders sitting there waiting. Um, they will be out on the very first courier run on Tuesday the 28th, I believe it is. So anyone who was looking at products, just letting you know how that's going. Wouldn't that sit there to work in for a bit? I'm probably going to jump on that in just a second. Um, having a quick look there with Joel, me wash them and go for gold, but now, <laughs> yeah. Exactly right, Joel. You could change your tact now. Uh, and Nathan says, yeah, wash, exactly, washers could take, the actual wash process could take quite a while. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the orange degrees again, and this brush. Now, am I going to be careful of this paint? Not really, because I'm going to be polishing this car over the coming week anyway, so I'm not really too concerned. If you brush, you know, don't brush paint, I always say don't brush paint, but if I'm brushing this paint right now, who cares, right? It's about to be polished. It's not going to make it too worse, especially because this is a very soft brush. A bit more on there to keep it working. Now, once again, when I go back to this with my iPhone camera very shortly, don't forget that what I said we're looking for, and what I want you guys to keep an eye out for, is we're looking for a very matte look trim without um, greasy spots um, and a trim that looks consistent. Okay, if it looks patchy and uneven, then this, this hasn't been done to the right degree. Okay, now why am I using more product? I'm using it just to keep it a bit wetter and to also just keep the product working, okay? There's no harm in using a bit more of this product. It's not, it's strong enough to be a lot stronger than normal sort of car wash product or car shampoo, I should say, but it's not strong enough that leaving this on there for a little bit longer or using a bit more product will do any harm. This is citrus pre-wash, but it's diluted one to four, okay? So it's diluted down, it's not pure. I'm gonna get over this sort of plastic on the mirror. I'm not gonna scrub the whole mirror, but I'm gonna scrub this sort of plastic material Okay, I'm just going to go over it one more time really quickly. Let's give it the best chance of knowing that I've scrubbed the, the rubber and the plastic as best as possible. For those of you joining, yes, this is scrubbing the paint a bit, but I'm not worried because the paint is a little bit wrecked on this car and it's going to be polished. So at the moment, all I'm trying to do with this whole video and this wash step right now is strip this car, get it really clean. Okay, cleaning is the number one thing I'm trying to achieve right now. Cool. Um, sweet. I will now rinse this off. Grab my citrus, whoops, citrus pre-wash once again and my brush and head back around to the back window. Respray that. Now for those, I don't know how well you can see on that main camera, but I'll get onto that with a iPhone camera very shortly. Um, the car is beating quite a lot, you probably see that on the glass. Uh, you know, like I said before, just again context, uh, this is my vehicle, it's my sort of daily driver. Um, dog wagon, stock wagon, whatever you want to call it. Um, I have washed it with hydrophobic products before, but I've never done a really deep clean. I've never clay barred it, I've never polished it. It's never had any more um, in-depth detailing, right? Okay, so it is beading a bit. It's only a top layer. It's nothing too crazy on there. I'm just going to rinse off this back window, then I'll get to that comment, and then we'll keep moving forward. What have we got on there? Um, if ordering non-essential products, is there a long wait to send out items? It'll be sent on, no, it'll be sent on Tuesday, Roy. So I am, um, every day I'm going into work at the moment now and I'm packing away orders that are essential goods, um, hygienic items, sanitary items, they go on the courier. 
anything that's not essential goods, I'm packing at the exact same time. It's just getting labeled and ready to go. Um, so basically the morning of Tuesday when the lockdown's over, all those parcels are ready to go. They've packed up, they'll get shoved out the front door of work and they'll be gone. So uh, just letting you know. So depending on the courier timeframes, if they're sent Tuesday, you'll get things as soon as Wednesday, Thursday, depending on where you are. Um, Matthew Julian, would you recommend this to you on a, yes, if you have a ceramic coated car already, uh, yes, you can still do this step and you can still use the brushes. Um, I would just be not be, be more careful than I was being. So you don't want to really scrub the paint, okay? So when I'm doing this just here, the car's not very good anyway, so I'm just, you know, I'm okay to scrub the paint a bit and not be too precious about it. But if you've already got a good conditioned car with a coating, still do that, but just don't scrub the paint with that brush at the same time. Uh, I'll get to your comment in a second, Carl. I'll just jump on this. Okay, so we can start to see these rubbers, they're still wet obviously, but hopefully you can see that it's looking a lot more consistent. I'll see if I can show you up here. Nice and consistent and matte. Now don't forget, this thing has done 160,000 Ks, it's a 2005, okay, so it's not a new car. You can see this rubber's nice and consistent along here. Was it rubber or plastic on that? It's rubber. So that's going to give it the best chance for protectants um, to bond with those trims. Um, Carl, is, this, is that a standard lance on the K2? Seems to have been there. Um, yes, it is a standard one on the K2. Let me know what you've got on your K3. Send me a private message if you want. Actually, I know I've got to get back to you, Carl, about some other things, but send me a message what you want. Uh, and coming from Roy, sweet. Okay, cool. So let's just quick, really quickly recap those who are joining. We're doing a heavier clean on the exterior of this car. We're getting the trims and things ready to not only be clean, but be ready for protectants. So far we've done the side skirt, we've cleaned in the fuel flap, we've cleaned the um, wiper cowl area, we've cleaned these trims. I'm not gonna keep cleaning the rest of the trims on this video, but what I'm gonna tell you is one thing. So the process that I've just done with these trims, the side skirts and that wiper cowl, repeat that process for anything that is an exterior plastic or rubber, okay? So the, this around the wipe, the windscreen, I will do this on this car, just not right now. This, do it with that, do it on these. Um, you know, there's the mud flap at the back, do it on that. On this car, can you see it on that camera angle? Not very well because of the light, but there's a plastic ruddle on that bottom of that front bumper. So scrub all that. So you want to use the citrus pre-wash or the orange degreaser, depending on where the overspray is going to go and how you're comfortable with it, to clean that. As the side skirt dries, I can see there's still a little bit of unevenness on that. So I'm going to end up scrubbing that again um, with more cleaner and more scrubbing to keep cleaning that. Okay, so one go on a car that's done 160,000 Ks is not always enough. Okay, um, sweet. Okay, so let's talk about the door jams. Let me just quickly see if I can find what is the worst one. I hear a van coming up the driveway. This could be a, I oh know it's a ute. Let's hope they're not interrupting my live stream. <laughs> okay, so these door jams aren't terrible, so I'll show you the process anyway. Very, very similar to what we've just done. And this is where you might find that your um, cotton buds, if you've got them, are going to be quite useful. So let me jump on my iPhone camera and I'll show you what I am about to do. Okay, so door jams. So we've been, we had a few comments, people asking about door jams and how to address them. Okay, like I say, these aren't terrible. I think I've actually given these a really quick clean out at some point. Um, but let's talk about them and let's address them as if they were horrendous. So door jams are a tricky area, okay? You could wash mitt these door jams, um, but realistically, um, that you're going to find that pretty tricky to get a good result. So what you want to do with door jams is a similar process to what we've just done. You want brushes and you want degreaser. Okay, so I'm going to go for the orange degreaser. And I'm going to go for that because the door jams generally are quite, um, or can be quite dirty. Um, if you're doing your own vehicles and these haven't really been done, then they will be quite dirty. These aren't terrible, but I'm going to show you the process as if they were. I'm going to go under to this little rubber strip along here. And I'm going to go along to here. I'm going to generally avoid whatever is on the inside of the rubber um, because I don't want to A, get cleaner on the door card 
Um, and B, when I'm rinsing this off, I don't want to risk having to get water all over that door card as well. So that's what you do. You can come down here along this with some orange degreaser. Just don't go inside the seal, basically. And then you could use a wash mitt or you can use a soft brush. These brushes that I'm using, that is a very soft bristle, okay? So it's not a firm bristle at all. And then you're just gonna basically scrub it through. Sounds pretty self-explanatory, right? But at the end of the day, this will make a really big difference uh, in your cleaning process, especially if you've got really grubby door jams. You definitely shouldn't have to do this every time, okay? So uh, if you do this every, you know, three months or something like that, it should keep these trims really clean. Get right into these things here. Now, some of you will have door jams where there is um, like a grease on the hinges. And I get asked about this, you know, what can I use to get the grease off? Well, the grease has a purpose, okay? If you want to clean it off, that's okay. Um, but I would recommend re-greasing it. Um, if you want to clean it off though, any of this sort of degreaser or citrus pre-wash, none of that is going to budge it, okay? Because the grease that they use, it's just too strong. So if you want to get the grease off of the, whoops, let's go under here off of the hinges and things like that. Um, wait till after you've cleaned the bulk of it and then use the citrus, pre, uh, citrus tar and glue remover uh, or any sort of solvent based product to get that off. Okay. Hopefully that's self-explanatory. Let me know, well not self-explanatory. Hopefully I've explained that well as what I should be saying. Um, well, there you go, Nathan, you've just, you've just predicted exactly what I've done. So there you go. So now what do you do? Do you water blast them? You can. Um, am I going to today? I am, but I'm going to turn the water blaster off. I just don't want to get water all through the trims and things. So now I use the water blaster while it's off. Sorry if this isn't focusing very well. Let me see if I can fix that. There we go. Now, see, even with the water blaster off, I'm trying to be careful and I'm trying to multitask, which is not going that well for me. I've got a bit of water on here, okay, so it will happen a little bit inadvertently, as long as you're not soaking it. I'm just going to go into here. You may get a little bit of spray of water in the car, which I can see here I'm getting a little bit. So if that happens, then simply get a microfiber towel and wipe that off. It's extremely minimal what's going in the car right now. Now, like I say before, you could also do this with a wash mitt. You don't have to scrub it, um, but you'll just find this using a brush, uh, whether it's the soft wheel brush I've just used or a boar's hair brush, that'll get the job done a lot better, okay? And look out also at this point for anything that looks wrong, if there's things missing or anything that's, that's loose. For example, this car doesn't have it, but if this um, plastic sort of bung, I suppose you call it, that was, um, if that was um, like loose around there, don't go running water in there, okay? You don't want water going all through your wiring. So just keep those things in mind as you do that. Now I know this wasn't that dirty before, but hopefully you guys can see um, how that process would work. Um, sometimes I get asked at this point, can I use hydrophobic shampoo or easy coat and rinse it off? Yep, you could use a protectant at this point, um, but I would just use a spray wax generally. So that's all done. Let's assume that's done on all the doors. Um, the water in there was so minimal that I'm not going to bother. Um, oops, let me just turn that off. The water in there was so minimal that I'm not going to bother um, wiping off the interior because it was a tiny, tiny amount. Um, but at that point, you'd wipe it off normally if it was a bit more water in there. Um, what have we got there? I use a microfiber and wipe this with the cleaner from the bucket three. Yeah, so that's fine as well, Joel. And to be fair, if you've got a relatively modern vehicle, depending on which one you're cleaning, Joel, um, using a degreaser and brushes just then may not be necessary. Uh, we're talking in this case more about cars which are a bit dirtier to start with. So the next step uh, we're going to talk about is removing, uh, or is decontaminating, okay? So using an iron remover. Now before you use an iron remover on a car, you do want it clean. Um, so what I'm gonna do quickly is I'm going to um, just mitt down a couple of panels and rinse them off, and then explain to you how an iron remover would work. Now this may not work on this because I don't even know if this car has any iron on it. Um, 
I honestly can't really see any, so this may not yield much of a result on this particular car. But let's give it a shot anyway. So what I'm going to do first, I'm not going to snow foam this just because I want to save time and not have you guys sitting on there forever. So I'm going to just water blast down this side and we're going to give it a quick two bucket wash mitt down and then apply some iron remover to it. Now while I mitt this side down, I'm going to use some citrus washing gloss. Let me know in these comments whether anyone on here has used an iron remover on their paint before. And I'm keen to know what you thought if you have used that. It's not something that is often done and it's something that people sometimes go, what in the world, you can't do that, but it's actually quite a good idea. going to do a really quick two bucket wash so for those who haven't watched the first video which is a safe wash process I'll quickly go this is I'll do it as I talk so two bucket method is basically using one bucket for your soap solution wiping that on then rinsing the wash mitt you're using into the rinse bucket to remove any of the dirt and put it in a different bucket than where your soap is then going back to the soap solution and moving forward with that so I'm just going to do these top panels here do the glass, move to the next bucket, back to the rinse bucket, get in there, put the dirt in there, back in the wash bucket. We'll do a couple of panels, I'm not going to do too many panels at a time. With the two bucket method, if you are doing a two bucket method at home, um, sometimes how many panels or how many sections you get before you have to rinse the wash mitt comes down to how dirty the car is uh, and what sort of condition it is already and what the result you're trying to get. This car's dirty, isn't good condition anyway, hasn't got polished paint or anything. So a couple of panels at a time is perfectly acceptable. Um, but if you had a car which um, was already really good condition, you may want to do smaller sections to make sure you get the dirt off more efficiently. Cool, done. Helps to turn the water blast on. Okay. Who's using iron remover? Joe has, have used it not often though, yep, you're right Nathan, so I don't know if this car will need it to be honest, I sound like another car's coming up the driveway, is this a courier, there's a courier, hey man, you're just on a, on a live stream, so, <laughs> you're all good, oh yeah, sweet, thank you very much, cheers mate, hmm, not mine anyway, <laughs> okay, so you want to use an iron, iron burn, something like that. You can use Dragon's Breath as well. I'll explain the difference really quickly. So you've got Dragon's Breath is a thicker product, and you've got Iron Burn is thinner. I find that Iron Burn is easier to spray on the surface. Dragon's Breath clings for longer. Uh, I don't see any significant iron on this car. In fact, I can't really see any at all. So I'm just going to use Iron Burn. I'm just going to spray it on. Now, the Iron Burn is pH neutral, okay? So you can spray this on everything, and I will. I'm going to spray it all over the paint glass, plastics, and some of you think, oh, it's a wheel cleaner, you can't spray that over the car. I mean, Iron Burn and Dragon's Breath, they're not technically wheel cleaners, they're really iron removers or iron fallout removers. Um, brake dust is iron, so they just happen to work well for that as well. Done. So then we just wait. That can take a good few minutes to react, so we'll leave that to react while that happens. Um, just having a look there. Sweet. Okay, so while that happens, I'm going to quickly just do some um, bilberry on these wheels and these tyres.
If anyone has any questions as I'm doing this, just let me know. The iron burn, um, for those of you who are looking at using it, you can leave that on a surface for up to about five minutes or possibly even a little bit longer. Um, so on this one today, I will leave it on there. Um, I don't know if there's going to be any iron. I'm hoping there is so I can show you guys what it looks like when there is. Um, but if there's not, then excuse the uh, uh, lack of... Um, well, how do I describe it? The lack of visual cue, I suppose, because if there's no iron, there's no iron, right? Not every car will have it. Uh, you, a lot of cars, you can very, very visibly see it before it begins. Um, a lot of cars, you can't, right? So just take that, um, or keep that in mind, I should say. A little bit of, hmm, is there? Yeah, there's a little bit of iron on this. Not a huge amount, um, but a little bit of iron. For those who are also watching this video right now, looking at me, just trying to multitask and scrub these wheels while the iron burn reacts. I'm using the Bilberry, which is a non-acid wheel cleaner. Bilberry is coloured purple, okay? So don't mistake this for being the same as the iron burn. It's not. This is just more of a basic wheel cleaner. Um, it just happens to be the same colour that we're expecting the... Uh, iron burn or iron removing products um, to be. And again, just to reiterate that for those joining and those still sitting here, I'm using iron burn on the paint instead of Dragon's Breath um, because the iron burn will spread a lot more evenly and I'll use this product as well, okay? And also this car's not that dirty, so, oh, sorry, the iron's not that bad, so I don't need to worry too much about having the thick product. Okay, yes there is some iron, let's jump on the, uh, uh, Tony, yes iron burn will colour up like Dragon's Breath, and I'll show you that now, so let's have a look on the top here, so you should be able to see that, you've got specks of, where is it, oh my goodness, specks of purple all through there, coming along here, Hopefully this is nice. Hopefully this is nice and clear on your screens as well, you guys. But you can see purple dots along there. Little purple dots. It sort of disappears. There's little bits here. Like I say, this isn't that bad. Um, little bits of iron there. Uh, actually, at the back panel, you can see iron along there. Little specks of purple. Hopefully you guys can see that properly. Let me know in those comments if that's actually as visible as I'm hoping it is. Um, I mean, I can certainly see it on my iPhone camera, but as to whether you guys can see it on your screens at home, as this whole Facebook Live probably destroys the quality, I'm not too sure, but anyway. So there's definitely iron on there. Oh, look, look at that mirror. There you go, there's a bunch on there. So, um... Why would you do that? Now, uh, a couple of things I want to note. What is iron? Iron is just contamination that can be existing um, from parking just in general areas, really. Often found in industrial areas, near railroads, things like that. Also in brake dust, of course, if you've got a really heavy brake dusty car, that could be flicking it up. Um, a, a clay bar process also removes iron. Okay, So if you're clay barring your car, that'll remove the iron. Um, but in this process, using a liquid iron remover, um, does a couple of things. It saves us time because it's going to save us less clay barring. Uh, it gives us another option to not clay bar. So if you were doing this as a maintenance step uh, and you didn't want to clay bar it, you could iron and remove it, rinse it off, and that's it. Um, and also what it does is if you've got heavy iron, now this car's not that heavy iron, but if you've got heavy iron, using a clay bar and scrubbing that iron can actually, um, uh, can actually scratch the car. Okay, So you want to use uh, liquid remover, you've got less chance of scratching because you've got less abrasion caused by the clay bar rubbing against the paint. So hopefully that 
explains itself on there. Um, so yeah, that is all done. Now what do you do? You basically just rinse it off. You can sort of scrub it with a microfiber a little bit to spread it around if you want, but for this case I'm just going to rinse it off. Goodness me, turn that on first. Rinse this stuff off really thoroughly, okay? So don't leave this to dry up, ideally. Done. Okay, now for those of you who um, also saw the decontamination video, uh, we were speaking about the same sort of concepts, why you'd use the iron remover. Um, and the biggest thing I want to just remember here against the decontamination video where we use the clay bar is you can use an iron removing spray cleaner um, as a maintenance step without having to clay and polish, okay? So let's take that Tesla from last week, for example. Let's assume and let's say that Tesla had been driving for another three months uh, and we wanted to not polish it again. You could wash that and just iron burn or dragon's breath the paint and then leave it at that, okay? You don't need to do anything additional. It's safe on top of coatings. Uh, it's safe on top of waxes, okay? so. Iron removing is a safe top process. In today's example, we're doing it because this video is all about doing a bit of a deeper clean of the car. Um, and we're do, doing a deeper clean, basically, I mean, I've just already washed this side with citrus washing and gloss. So um, what we're showing is that those iron spot, uh, spots were embedded in the paint. A normal wash is not going to remove those, okay? So that's what we mean about deeper cleaning steps. Um, you're right, Harrison, that shop is brown with specs. Uh, one more thing I'm gonna show you as well. I am running out of things to show you actually, so that's, I um, don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but uh, one more thing I want to show you guys, get my little iPhone going. Um, this, this headlight here, so you can see that we've got this sort of polish residue on the seam there. So let's try and address that, so let's use the orange degreaser. Oh, that, oh, I almost did something terrible guys, that's the pure orange degreaser. Where did I put the diluted bottle? I think I'm having a bit of a, a moment. Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay, so let's use the diluted orange degreaser. Spray that along that headlight. Now we will grab the brush. We'll use this sort of softer one. And we'll just get that along. Hopefully you can see there, see the white line of polish? I'll see if I can make that focus. Gone. So then just keep going around the headlight with this. This is good if you've got anything like this sort of polishy residue. These headlights were given a very basic sand um, when some panel work was done on the car. So that's why there is some polish residue around these. I haven't actually polished these myself. But yeah, all we're using right now is orange degreaser, a sort of medium bristle brush, and just scrubbing it around. Easy. Water blaster. Done. Look at that. That was a very, very quick and easy way to just improve the look of that straight away. Does this headlight have any? There's some around there, so you can see that's what was there before. We had white polish residue, and now that's gone. Okay. Hopefully, that's pretty self explanatory. Um, fancy putting a spray on <laughs> here. Yeah, you are right, Tony. Um, the, the bottles do come with a spray trigger as it is, which is a little bit odd, but uh, it's just the way it is. Almost caught me off there, which is, I'm lucky it didn't. Um, Joel, for your car, should I get extra, I've been mild. Um,
This is Ironburn Mild I'm using. Um, the extra is a little bit stronger. Um, depends what you're doing with it. If you're doing a maintenance decontamination, then honestly mild or extra is fine. If you're using Ironburn to clean wheels, mild on a vehicle which doesn't give out too much brake dust is good. Um, extra on a vehicle which gives out a lot of brake dust. In case you've got a performance car or a car with really heavy brake dust, you want to use the extra. I'll quickly give a little spray of this on the wheels. We'll see if any iron reacts up on these wheels. Now don't forget that I've just already sprayed these and wiped these down, or scrubbed them down I should say, with the bilberry. Okay, so I've already technically cleaned them. But let's have a look and see if this is like the other the rest of the car. You know, the rest of the car, like we've explained, I've washed the side, I've then iron removed it, and iron still reacted because the wash process doesn't get it off. Let's see if the wheels do the same. Um, I'm pretty much running out of things to show you guys in terms of additional exterior deep cleaning steps. Um, we've talked about the rubbers and plastics, we've talked about um, the iron removal, we've talked about the door jams, we've talked about the side skirts, we've talked about getting polish residue off those headlights. Um, let me just show you while I wait for that iron burn to react. The back trim has dried up a little bit. You can see see the look of that now. That is very nice and even. That is what you want. Just to show you guys. Um, let's see if this iron burn's doing anything on these wheels. Hmm. A little bit there. That's probably coming more from the barrel of the wheel to be fair. Um, that you can see even, okay, if you look at this here, Hopefully that's focused for you guys. So this is, again, this is not the best example of it, but you can see these specks, they're all iron, right? And even up on here, that's iron there as well. Little specks there of iron. So again, what I'm just reminding you about this is a wheel cleaner by itself does not always deep clean it, right? But you also don't need to use iron remover every single time. I'm just showing you in this example how giving it a good scrub with bilberry cleans the dirt off. But there's still iron specks coming up. You can see there a little speck of iron at the top, just up there. Okay, so this is what we mean when we're talking about deep cleaning. It's getting more of the embedded particles and contaminants off the car before you do any more work on it. Um, Tony, Dragon's Breath is more like a heavy duty iron burn. Um, Dragon's Breath is thicker. Okay, so Dragon's Breath and Iron Burn, I'm just going to do this a bit more thoroughly while I talk, guys, and multitask. Dragon's Breath and Iron Burn is, uh, bo or both have a similar con uh, concept. I personally find that Iron Burn being thinner means that it's easier to spray, you use less product, um, but it doesn't tend to cling for as long. And so in my opinion, it doesn't tend to work for as long, which basically means you're not going to get as good a result sometimes. Uh, Dragon's Breath is thicker, so Dragon's Breath will stay on the surface for longer. It'll pull more of the brake dust or iron contamination off over a longer period of time because it's a gel. So it's a more gel product. So basically, if, you are, if you're trying to deep clean something for the first time and it's really dirty, use Dragon's Breath or Iron Burn Extra. If you're trying to deep clean something for the first time and it's not that dirty, iron burn mild, iron burn extra. And if you're trying to clean something continually that's already been done well initially and you're just maintaining it, um, then any of those three honestly will be suitable depending on your personal preference. Uh, I find that with the products, a lot of customers prefer one or the other. Uh, it's just a preference side of things as well. Um, I wonder actually whether I can try and demonstrate that. Yeah, I probably almost can. Let's see if I can try something for you, Tony. Give me just a second. So let me try and show you. So, I mean, the Dragon's Breath, you might have actually used these, Tony, I'm not so sure, but for anyone else wondering, this is the Dragon's Breath. Let me get that focus. I'll just spray that on that half of the wheel. You can see it's very thick when it goes on. It's almost quite foamy. The iron burn goes on similar. But look how straight away you can see the dragon's breath. It's sitting on there a lot more. It's just sitting pretty still. If you see that iron burn, if you look at all this here, that's running a lot faster, okay? So dragon's breath, 
iron burn. And it's thinning out a lot. Look how much that's thinning out. That's staying quite thick. Okay, so hopefully that is a little bit of an explainer to show you guys um, the difference between those two products. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Tony, if that's answered your question, let me know. If it hasn't, let me know. Um, Harrison, can you dilute Dragon's Breath? Um, you can, um, but I don't know. I find that if you're going to dilute Dragon's Breath, you're better off just buying Iron Burn. You know, if, you, if you're diluting it, you're diluting it, or you should be diluting it to try and make it thinner and therefore easier to spray. Um, whereas you may as well just use Iron Burn if that's the intention. Another thing to note is that those of you who've been using Dragon's Breath in the past, they did update the formula late last year. Uh, and so it is a little bit thinner uh, in a good way than what it used to be. So it's a little bit easier to spray, but it still has the same sort of gel principles uh, that it's always been known for. So hopefully all of that video today has really started to get you guys to understand some deep cleaning steps. Um, I'm pretty much done really in terms of the things that I want to show you guys today. Um, if you've got any questions that you want to throw my way about deep cleaning the exterior or anything else, chuck them up on this video now. I am still live in the interim. So do let me know if you've got any further questions. Uh, and the other thing is, guys, I'm going to keep just deep cleaning this car. Let me know, and this is pretty random, but let me know if you think that I should just leave this live camera rolling. I'm happy just to keep it rolling, and if you've got any more questions, you can throw them at me. Um, otherwise, I will turn off the live stream. But I have to finish off the deep cleaning of this car anyway, so I'm going to have to keep working throw some questions my way. Just see if there's any questions on there. My Dragon's Breath bottle's a bit older. Um, yeah, Tony, if your Dragon's Breath bottle is like the white bottle like that, as opposed to the slightly see-through bottle, um, then you may possibly have the older formula, which is a bit thinner. Um, I'm not too sure. It depends on the bottle and when you bought it. If you really want to know as well, and you can tell me which order you got it on. Um, not right now, because I'm not against a computer, obviously, but um, later on I can help you with that. Leave it live, says Kurt. Might get a bit boring just watching me run around a car washing bits and pieces, but then again, that's what everyone's been doing, or what I've been doing this whole time, so maybe not. And tomorrow's video, I'm pretty sure is going to be, uh, when I say I'm pretty sure I should know this, but sanding the car. So if anyone is tuning in tomorrow, that will be quite an um, interesting video. <laughs> if anyone hasn't seen a car get wet sanded before, then uh, you will be in for a treat, that is for sure. Um, and with Dragon's Breath or Iron Burn, you want to just keep scrubbing these wheels, okay? So you can let it uh, react and just rinse it off. But giving it a bit of a scrub on the wheels will help. And the other thing I'll do on some subsequent videos on this car is I'll show you guys Solution Finish for anyone who hasn't seen it or who's keen to know the right way of doing it. I'll just check my video in just a second to see if anyone else has got more comments. Um, but as you would know from other videos I've done, when you're wheel cleaning you need to be pretty conscious of what you're doing. You don't want to let this dry up too much. What have we got? Um, do these products ever expire or go off? I have Dragon's Breath, it's at least three years old. Wow, that's old Dragon's Breath. Um, they shouldn't do, well, actually should they? Yeah, they will to an extent. If it's been sealed, um, actually Harrison, just put on there, is it a bottle that's been completely sealed or has it been half opened and half used? Let me know about that first. For anyone just joining this video, 
uh, we are talking or we have talked about deep cleaning the exterior so we've talked about cleaning the plastics cleaning side skirts door jams uh, inside the fuel filler cap uh, we've talked about other plastics the wiper cowl an iron burn as well as an extra step um, We've pretty much done on what I need to talk about with this video, but I'm going to just keep the video rolling for now while I work the way around the car a bit more. And if people have questions, they can throw them up. Um, but if you're just joining, um, you've pretty much missed the video, so you probably want to scroll back and have a look. <laughs> like I said before guys that side step I'm still not that happy with it's not as matted down as I would like so I'm just going to go over that again same with that mud flap because I've done most of the video I'm gonna I'm gonna answer any questions you guys have but I'm also gonna work around this relatively efficiently so excuse me if I go on and off camera while I'm trying to work around this car but I suppose actually for you, Kurt, for example, who said leave it live, this should give you a bit more of an indication about hopefully how much time this should normally actually take. Um, as I have a little bit less talking and explaining to do, I'm just going to work around this car nice and quickly. Firstly, I'm just spraying on all these plastics on the sides, playing on the side skirts, the mud flaps. I'm going to leave uh, this side skirt for a little bit longer. She gives any comments on there. So the hatch boot, same as door jams. Yep, definitely. So if you've got a hatch or, or a boot on the car, um, same process as the door jams. You can use the um, degreaser or anything, even like the all, all, for example, the all clean that we used uh, yesterday. I think it was. Oh no, the day before. Was it the day before? Whenever it was. The all clean we used, you can use on the jams as well. You can also use things like the Valet Pro Classical Purpose Cleaner. Um, they're all perfectly safe as well. Um, it's just that for today, and using the orange degrees from Chemical Guys, it's a stronger product, so it will just get things cleaner. But equally, feel free to use what you have, everyone. If you don't have certain things, use what you've got. And if you don't have the products that I've spoken about today and you're not in a position to want to get those products and you want some advice over what, you, what else you could use, um, send me a product list. Tell them what you've got at home. Just car detailing products, of course. <laughs> and let me know um, what you could use. Um, what have we got? We've got a half litre bottle of Dragon's Breath only open once. Ah, it should be fine to be honest Harrison. I mean, a couple of years it shouldn't have gone off as long as it's been sealed. Uh, any of those products be able to remove bird dropping stains? Um, not really to be honest mate. These are more just the cleaners. If you've got stains from bird droppings, you're probably looking more towards a sand and polish process. Um, if it is quite light and just on the surface of the car, uh, then yes, these possibly will work. But I wouldn't rely on these to, use, uh, to remove bird dropping stains. And again, I'll just say it in case anyone's joining. I don't know if they are or not. I'm not keeping a good eye at that uh, screen. But if anyone's joining, we've just spoken about cleaning plastics, cleaning iron, uh, sorry, using iron burn on the car. We've spoken about getting uh, trims and things ready for protectants and solution finish and stuff like that. We've basically done the tutorial, but I'm going to keep working on this car with you guys on video so you can see how long it's going to take me um, and also answer any more questions you've got. So if you are just joining and you're wondering what we're going on about, maybe scroll back. Or back that way I should say uh, on the video and watch the process 
we're pretty much done. I'm just leaving the video on to keep watching what I'm doing. Um, Tony, mine's the same as... Oh, sorry, Tony, I just saw. Um, oh, okay. Uh, the square bottle, that's the one litre. So these are the 500 mil ones. Um, the one litres also change in bottle. So the one litres do come in a, uh, a white uh, bottle like that, similar to that sort of thing. You can see that. And they also come in a smaller see-through bottle. The smaller see-through bottle is the same literage, it's just a smaller, it's just different dimensions, it's, it's thicker but shorter, so it looks different, same amount of literage, but if you've got a small square bottle with a slightly see-through texture, then it'll be the new generation of Dragon's Breath. Okay, so I've done over the first lot of those plastics, I need to go back over the um, Need to go back over the side step on the other side one more time. I'm going to scrub, I'm sorry, I'm going to spray the side step one more time. I know you guys can't see this, but um, spray in the side step. I'm going to try and be a bit more efficient, so I'm going to spray that, leave that, come around to this headlight, spray that. Straight away, grab my little brush. I think you guys probably can't see this either, especially given the lighting on the video. Um, but sorry if you can't, but I've, I'll talk to you and let you know what I'm doing verbally. So I'm currently doing that second headlight, the same process you guys saw me do on the first headlight. And I'm doing that while I wait for that side skirt to, um, uh, to react with the product for a little bit or let it, let, it, let it break down the dirt. So that headlight is done just like that. I'm trying to be efficient and again showing you guys, so now I'm grabbing the bilberry. I'm going to come around to these wheels, relatively liberal spray, those who just heard me pull the trigger, that's one wheel, second wheel, liberal spray, spraying it all over the tyre too. Okay, now that's reacting with the dirt on those wheels, that's the bilberry, leaving that, grabbing my brush, going back around the side to the side skirt. Now that again, that's covered in orange degreaser. But that's been sitting there reacting while I've been spraying the wheel cleaner, talking to you guys. As I'm working this, I'm aware in the back of my mind the headlight's still drying. This is a bit of the, uh, the life of an actual detailer when you're trying to do this from an efficiency perspective. I'm sitting here thinking to myself, okay, the headlight's drying, the bilberry's reacting on these wheels, the side skirt's getting scrubbed as I speak. Keep scrubbing that side skirt. Cool, side skirt scrubbed. Brush in there. Rinse off the headlight. Cool, that's rinsed off. Gonna leave the um, gonna leave that side skirt reacting for a bit longer. What else have we got? Thank you, Carl. No worries, no worries, Harrison. If you guys are jumping out, I don't blame you. I'm just uh, going over the same things we've already spoken about, but just going to finish off this car. And yeah, like I say, I'll be putting solution finish on the plastics. I don't think I've actually got a video scheduled to do that, so um, I'll probably have to make another video or slip it into one of the other videos to show um, how to do that. That's a pretty simple process, to be honest, but. Uh, it would be good to explain it for anyone who doesn't quite understand solution finish or how it works. Um, so maybe I'll make a little short video about that uh, as a live stream as well. So I'm scrubbing these wheels, just you know, <laughs> verbally letting you know, guys know what I'm doing. Scrubbing the bilberry. I'm keeping an eye on that side skirt. It is slowly drying up, but on this side of the car, I'm lucky in the sense that I'm not in the direct sun. So I'm scrubbing the bilberry, side skirt's drying. Okay, so that is a nicely scrubbed wheel. It's looking still dirty because I haven't rinsed it off, but looking a lot better than what it did. 
And now this is that real efficiency side of things. Look how much dirt's come off. Ooh, how can I show you that? Will that hit the light there? Slightly can see that. Dirty brush. Okay, with the water blaster. No worries, Harrison. I don't know if I already said that or not. Um, back around the side, get the... Side skirt rinsed. Gonna need to move my water blaster a little bit. I'm gonna turn the side skirt off. Oh, sorry, turn the water blaster off. My goodness. I'm not even thinking about what I'm saying now. This is what happens when you try and be efficient, you just lose your train of thought. And I'm gonna rinse through those side skirts or side steps or whatever you want to call them from the inside of the jam. I'm probably not going to do the rest of the um, door jams on this video today. I mean, I was showing you guys how to do it. The reality is this is my very, very daily, daily driver. I don't really care. They're not that dirty anyway. So for those of you watching me finish this off and thinking, oh, he hasn't done the rest of the door jams, I'm just probably not going to bother. Terrible, I know, but I don't want to make this car look too good, otherwise I won't want to, I won't want to drive it otherwise. Okay, so now those wheels are rinsed off. How many people are still watching? We've still got six of you guys watching, with watching me uh, go around this slowly. Okay, my dragon's breath. G'day. Cool, so I've got the dragon's breath on there now. We'll let that sit there for a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is rinse the rest of the car, get that ready to give it a mitt. I haven't snow foamed this, uh, as you guys would have seen. Oh, I've missed a big patch along there. It's atrocious. Can't miss bits. Cool. So I'm just gonna. And again, I don't know if Kurt's still watching this or not, but this is sort of where you can start to get some efficiencies in. Uh, we spoke on, a, on an email about sort of time and stuff, but uh, you know, this is where the Dragon's Rest now reacting on the other side of the car. I'm not gonna sit there and wait for it. It's in the shade. I know roughly how long that will take to react. So I'm just gonna start missing the roof, grabbing these side sort of roof rails as I'm doing that, making sure that I'm getting them nice and clean. Now one little challenge I've realised I'm going to have on going with these streams, it's a little bit of a, it's not too much of a challenge but something a little bit interesting, is that I'm going to be using this car every day to go to work and back. Um, and at the same time we're going to be also doing pretty much daily videos on it. So that's gonna mean that I'm gonna to need to find some sort of witty way to uh, keep it clean, um, or at least clean it down, I should say, without giving it a full wash every single day. So for those of you who've seen the uh, rinseless and waterless washing videos um, that I've done already, 
that'll be part of the solution. Just letting you guys know as well, that as I'm doing this, I'm looking at these wheels on the uh, passenger side here. They're still um, very much wet with Dragon's Breath. They haven't dried up, so I'm not too worried about that as yet. Really is pretty dirty this car. If anyone is just joining the stream, and I don't know if you are because I'm not keeping a good eye on that uh, computer but if you're just joining the stream we've actually finished the bulk of the tutorial uh, video today I'm just finishing off what we started on the Subaru and I'm just leaving the uh, video on to run while I do that just so anyone's still interested in seeing sort of how long this process actually takes and all that can stay on there I'm not expecting this to take that long though, I'm pretty, to be honest, I'm actually pretty close to getting there. All I've got to do is finish mitting this, which will take another minute or so. I've got to quickly scrub down the plastics on the passenger side, spray the whole car down in iron burn, dry it off, and then that's pretty much it. So I reckon in about 20 minutes probably, maybe even less, I will be done. Cool. No worries, thank you Matthew, thanks for jumping on. Time to order, do you say? Sounds good. <laughs> As I'm doing this, I'm still aware the Dragon's Press on the other side, I haven't forgotten about that yet. So what I'm going to do, again we're speaking about efficiency here, I'm going to grab my brush, wheel brush, citrus pre-wash, Spray down all those plastic trims. I'm going to spray down these roof rails. Around that mirror. I'm going to grab my wheel brush, start doing these wheels with the dragon's breast still on there. There's very, very little reaction, there's only a little bit, so this process or this step probably hasn't made a huge difference. Back in that wheel bucket, grab that wheel brush and just start scrubbing down these plastics. 
And for any of you still watching, thank you for the support of uh, watching me wash a car. <laughs> For anyone joining, you've missed the main event, but you can always scroll back on this video. I'm just finishing off this car and leaving this live stream going so people can see sort of how long this takes and all that. Scrub these roof rails down a little bit. These are a sort of coated metal, so I'm probably not going to put solution finish on them. Probably won't really work very well because it's not a, it's not plastic, this uh, roof rail. So but I'm still going to clean it. So just recapping, I've scrubbed the wheels and I've scrubbed the plastics. Now we've got to rinse those off, and then there's only one more step, and then we're done. Any products you would use for a car with sign running on? Um, do you mean for this particular process or something different? I mean, generally speaking, what I've used today probably would all be fine apart from... Uh, you could use the orange degreaser, but I would probably give that some cautionary uh, advice against using that on a um, sign ridden car. Um, but everything else, citrus pre-wash, iron burn, um, obviously this, the citrus washing gloss is perfectly safe. Um, brushes you can still use, although, uh, <coughs> sorry, sign writing can get affected by brushes, so you can scratch up vinyl with brushes. Just so for those of you watching, not many of you left, I don't blame you to be honest, but... Um, for those of you watching, I'm just doing that final spray of iron burn across the car. All the panels we haven't done. And then that's the last step for this vehicle. Oh, apart from drying it, of course, but that will be a quick dry with a drying towel. Um, yeah, sorry Matthew, I don't, I mean, sorry not Matthew, Kurt, I don't know if there's anything that I wouldn't use, um, apart from the orange degreaser pretty much. Um, well, to clean it in a safe way, I mean things like the citrus washing gloss, you could just clean it with something like that. You don't generally need to use something that is, um, there's a product on there, something that different. There is also though in the Chemical Guys range, um, if it's gloss, so I would just use a citrus washing gloss, but there is also some matte products in the Chemical Guys range. So if there's matte sign running, those can be better. See if this iron burn's reacting up. It's not really reacting too much, this iron burn, so. Um, yeah. Let me know, Kurt, what are you currently using on, um, on those cars? Is there something specifically you are or aren't using on these sign ridden cars? Or, or more to the point as well, is there any products you've used in the past that have caused you issues on the sign ridden cars? That's probably also something worth noting. Obviously if you've had any problems with products, I'll try and uh, sort of explain products that will avoid that happening. 
be, I mean, like, you need to be careful of brushes, they can scratch sign writing. You need to be careful of heavy cleaners. And you need to be careful of uh, anything abrasive, so things like polishes. Um, dare I say, things like magic sponges are very, very abrasive. You know, so those types of things you want to be very careful of. It's not really reacting very much, so I'm just going to rinse this off now, I think. Very, very little reaction on this side, so not much iron whatsoever. thorough when you're rinsing off this iron. If anyone, I see a couple of people have just joined. We've pretty much done the video explaining all the uh, ex deep exterior cleaning techniques. Um, we're just finishing off this car on video so people can see how long it takes and all of that. Um, but if you're just joining and you're wondering what's going on, you probably need to scroll back a little bit and start the video from the beginning. Because in terms of what's happening live, we're pretty much done. Now one little thing I will actually address just quickly because sometimes I get asked this, after using the iron burn, do you need to re-wash it? Um, I don't personally think so, especially with the iron burn, given that it's quite thin. Um, Dragon's Breath is quite thick and can linger and can go up behind trims and behind wheel spokes and things like that and just sort of sit there and can become quite nasty because it smells bad and it's thick and all that sort of thing. Um, but iron burn, you should most of the time be able to just simply um, dry the car afterwards, 
as you normally would, so long as you rinse the product off um, very thoroughly first. Probably only have this uh, still on live for about another minute or so, so if anyone's got any final questions that they want to chuck my way before the live ends, do go ahead. I'm happy to help. Again, drying towel, we're using the uh, Fireball Twist Dry once again. It's one of my favourites and it's one that we've used on pretty much every, uh, well in fact not on pretty much, on every wash down video that's been done so far, including on the rinseless wash video as well. As you can see it's pretty effortless. Big scrape on the back of the car, it's really going to annoy me now, now that it's clean. Almost done. Last sort of panel or two to dry. And then we are done. Well, apart from the wheels, but I'll dry them off in a bit. No worries Adrian, I see you just joined. I'm just going to do a quick final walk around of this car. So we're pretty much done now. As we can see it's had a nice sort of deep clean. Doesn't actually look that bad overall. See all these trims and stuff are looking nice and even now. All that polish residue around the headlights, that's all gone. Looking pretty good. Okay, cool. Thank you for joining everyone. Um, and uh, yeah, we will see you again soon. For those of you who just joined now, you've missed most of the video, so scroll back uh, and start again. But yeah, we'll be in touch soon. There'll be a list of products of what we we'll use today up online very shortly. Uh, and we will see you again tomorrow for some wet sanding. Thank you very much.